Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Kathy, and let me be the first to extend my congratulations to all of the nominees this evening. Uh, we're very happy to be here with you tonight. On behalf of Liberty Mutual Insurance, I want to thank you all for joining us uh, to honor those who inspire us and serve as reminders that real change is possible. It's important for us to acknowledge and celebrate the achievements of those who succeed in creating an inclusive culture. Change does not happen overnight. And these honorees have dedicated months, years, lifetimes to create systemic transformation that will continue long after they've patched, passed the torch to the next agents of change. Just as Arnold Rosoff did for those of us in this room tonight. Liberty Mutual is very proud to be a partner of the Rosoff Awards, and we are not here just to support a cause. We are here to support our future. I'm very honored to be here to present the 2014 Champion of Change Award to an individual who embodies the future of Boston. The Champion of Change Award honors an individual who, over his or her career, has made sustained outstanding contributions to a minority community by providing guidance and experience. This award is bestowed upon someone who goes above and beyond his or her professional requirements to mentor, to lead, to inspire. The Champion of Change Award also takes into consideration the overall impact made by the honored individual over the course of his or her career. The 2014 Champion of Change is none other than Boston's own mayor, Martin J. Walsh. So he'll, he'll let me embarrass him a little bit more. His commitment, his commitment to civil rights gained national attention just two months after he took office. This proud son of Irish immigrants, Mayor Walsh did not take part, as many of you know, in South Boston's annual St. Patrick's Day Parade. After repeated attempts to negotiate a deal to allow LGBT groups to participate, a strong statement from our city's 54th mayor. And anyone who knows Mayor Walsh was not the least bit surprised. Before taking his oath, he worked his way up from a union laborer at the age of 18 to become the widely respected State House Representative for the 13th District of Suffolk County. During his 16 years as representative, Mayor Walsh compiled a strong record supporting community of color, communities of color, immigrants, and seniors. He teamed up with the Boston Housing Authority to create Building Pathways, a pre-apprentice trades program that opened doors in the building trades industry for women and people of color. As an advocate for strong public schools, Mayor Walsh not only fought for increased funding for public and alternative schools in the legislature, he co-founded the Neighborhood House Public Charter School. He is a true friend to our children, our neighbors, and those of us here tonight. A man whose word is his bond, we trust him to lead Boston into a prosperous future marked by diversity and marked by inclusiveness. So on behalf of my Liberty Mutual colleagues, the Ad Club, I'm very honored to present the 2014 Champion of Change Award to Mayor Martin J. Walsh. Thank you very much, Paul, and, and I appreciate you know, those words. A lot of what Paul read about, I'll talk about in a second. I want to thank Kathy as well. Uh, thank you very much. I I'm honored. You have no idea how honored I am um, to receive this award. And uh, when, I, when I'm receiving on behalf of a lot of people in City Hall and in my work in the building trades and my work in the legislature, I also just want to welcome Senator Cowan. Um, a friend and somebody who's been very helpful to me and I'm very proud of uh, when he served us. The smartest man in politics, the United States Senate. He went down there for three months, gets a title for life and gets out of the business and makes some money. 
I want to thank Don as well for co-chairing this event. Thank you very much. I want to thank the Rosoff family as well. Um, thank you very much. You know, I am deeply honored um, to receive this award. I've been mayor of the city now for about five months. Uh, and Paul spoke a little bit about uh, my background. I'll just give you a, a quick briefing, brief of my background. I grew up in Dorchester. I still live there now in the St. Margaret section of Dorchester. I grew up in a diverse neighborhood. Uh, when I was a kid, the neighborhood was in tra transition. Uh, 47 years later, the neighborhood's still in transition. It's changed. It's diverse. It's something that, that in my house, and I said this often, when my father passed away, I thought about, my father came from Ireland, my mother came from Ireland. I never heard him talk about anybody. He never talked bad about a group of people. He never talked bad about anything. And I realized that after, after he died, I said, wow, my father, he just wasn't critical of anyone. So I grew up in a house that, that, was, that was understanding. On the top floor of my house when I was a kid, we had a couple that lived up there, two men, and they were gay. And I didn't realize this until after I was running for mayor of the city of Boston, that when I was at seven years old, I came down with cancer. And I lost all my hair because I had treatments of, of uh, chemotherapy and radiation. And Paul, on the third floor, came down and took a clipping of my hair because at the time, you wouldn't shave your head, you'd get a wig. And he went out and came back with, with a red-headed wig, that had red hair. And I thought about, again, my father, how he never criticized anything. When the legislature had to take a vote to protect gay marriage, I immediately came out on the side of supporting the gay community. Never got criticized in my house, knowing it was the right stand to take. I viewed it as the last, rights, last civil rights fight in this country, gay marriage. As the head of the building trades, thank you. I took over the building trades in 2010. And when I got into the office, I sat at a table and there was 16 unions that were representing the building trades. And my first meeting with the business managers, I sat around the table and there were 17 of us in the room. There were 17 white men in the room. And I said to them at the time, we need to make some changes here. And we sat down and we created a program called Building Pathways with the, building, with the Boston Housing Authority. And any of you, most of the people in the room are associated with workforce development. There's a lot of pre-apprentice programs, and those pre-apprentice programs is a job training program, and at the end of the training, you might get a job, you might not, hopefully you do, maybe you won't, but at least you're trained in something. And I realized when we created that program, we had to do more than just have a job training program. So what I added on that, in that agreement, was at the end of it, that there'd be 100% placement into the building trades. So every young person that went through the program and graduated the program, you would be placed in a union. Brian McPherson from Suffolk Construction was at the table. Because it wasn't simply enough to train somebody and at the end of it say, well, we trained you. That's our credit. No, we have to put people in. And I'm proud to say tonight that we've had 90 graduates of the 90, 87 women and people of color that have gone through the billing trades. <laughs> it's not enough, but it's, it's, it's a clear start. And that's been about a year and a half in, in the making the, the program. When I got elected mayor, as I was running around the city for mayor, you know, Boston is a majority minority city. 54% people of color that are, the lead, that are in our city. As I, as I run it, we were going around talking about running for mayor, it came up in every single conversation. What are you gonna do in the communities? What are you gonna do in the communities? How are you gonna make your administration more diverse? And the first thing we did when we got elected was when we put together the police department, we made sure that 50% of the upper echelon of the police department, the command staff, are people of color, to send a message out to the communities, the same communities that we're working to reduce the violence. So when young black men and young Latino men see that the command staff of the Boston Police Department looks like them, grew up in the same neighborhoods they did, we're sending a message that it's okay to do the right thing and to, to aspire for things higher. We're able to do that. Dan Cole, my chief of staff, who's here with me tonight. We, we sit down every single day in our office and we try to do the right thing when we talk about how we're gonna make our city more inclusive. We're not nearly where we wanna be, but we're gonna continue to move forward to make sure we are there. A report came out last week that two-thirds of our young men between, under the age of 19 are black and Latino. The Boston Globe called me up and did an interview and they said, you know, we have a problem in the black and Latino community, particularly around young men, where there's lack of opportunity, lack of education, what are you gonna do about it? 
That's what we're doing every single day in City Hall. We're going to reform our high schools, but we're also going to work at workforce development. And I said, it's not going to be a problem. And the reporter said, what do you mean it's not going to be a problem? It's not going to be a problem because we're going to address the shortfalls that we have right now. We're going to close the achievement gaps. We're going to create opportunities. We're going to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to succeed in advance. So they did that story. I'm going to back up real quickly on the parade. During the campaign as well, I was asked, and I marched in the St. Patrick's Day Parade many times. I'm an Irishman, in case you don't know. <laughs> I marched in that parade. And I said, as a mayor of the city of Boston, I will not march in that parade if the parade is not inclusive. And we had many discussions about making sure that parade was inclusive. And at the very end of the day, we came up with an agreement, even though it wasn't reported in the press. We came up that gay servicemen, gay police officers, and gay staff, people on my staff could march in the parade. It was a win. The problem was one individual decided that they couldn't carry a banner and identify who they were. The, the letters LGBTQ were not allowed to be in the parade in a banner. And I made a decision, and we made a decision as a city, not to march in that parade. Because if we're going to march in a parade, we don't march in a parade by not identifying who you are. We march in a parade being proud of who you are. And I'm very... And I'm hopeful, and I'm hopeful that we'll be able to march in the parade next year. But if we don't allow people to identify who they are, we will not be marching the parade. I want to thank all of you in this room. I want to thank all of the people who are getting recognized tonight for the great work you do in the city. We have a long way to go. We have a lot of barriers to break down still. In 2014, we shouldn't be have to break barriers down, but we still do. But as mayor of the city of Boston, I give you this commitment. We are going to make sure that as we're breaking those barriers down one at a time, we're going to do it in our own house first. We're going to make sure that people have the opportunity. We are going to mentor young people to make sure they have a chance to get into public office so someday they can be Senator Mo Cowan and Mayor Marty Walsh. Someday they'll be able to be in this room honoring people and probably looking back saying, I can't believe it was that difficult in 2014. <laughs> but I want to congratulate the companies that are in this room. Thank you for doing your part. I know a lot of you as I look around the room and I see what you do and I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for your commitment. The last thing I will say, and this is a shameless plug, we are working this year to employ young people to give them the opportunity to work for the summer. Eventually we're working towards a year-round program. Some of you do do this program already. I see Joe Spaulding from, from City, City, I was going to say the Wang. During the campaign I had a chance to go and visit Joe. And Joe, I was talking to him about the campaign. And Joe said, come with me, I want to take you for a walk downstairs. We went downstairs in the basement of the Wang Theater. And we went down there, there was 20 young people from Dorchester that were getting an opportunity of a lifetime, learning about performing, learning about responsibility, getting a job. And I left there saying, this is what we have to replicate all over the city of Boston. So I'm asking all of you today, if you're not part of our summer job program, I'd like you to be part of our summer job program. I'd like you to, even if you can just hire one young person, that one young person that you're going to hire will be an opportunity for you to mentor them so that in case they're thinking of going down the wrong track, you can pull them back on the right track. It's important for us to be able to mentor young people because many of us have had mentors and some of us have made mistakes in their life. I certainly have made more than one or two or three different mistakes in my life and people have given me the opportunity to rebound. So I'd ask you all, if you, not, if you haven't hired anybody, you can certainly see me. You can see Dan, or you can call City Hall, and we can certainly get you some young people. Last year, we employed 9,123 young people in the city of Boston. Over 14,000 young people signed up to get a summer job. That means that 5,000 kids didn't get a summer job for whatever reason. This year, we want to shatter the 10,000 job mark. We want to make sure that any young person that calls our office looking for a summer job has an opportunity to go to work because the job that they're gonna get with one of your companies potentially is gonna be life-changing. And trust me when I say that, life-changing. They'll have an opportunity to be mentored by somebody like you at this table. They'll have a chance to see what it's like to work in, in an office, what it's like to, to, to get a paycheck, to be able to help their families. So I'd like to ask you, if you haven't done that, please consider um, employing some young person. Lastly, I just wanna thank you for this recognition. I am honored. I am honored for this recognition, and trust me, every day in my office, when I go into my office, I will look at this bowl and say, there is more work to be done. Thank you, and have a great night.
Mayor Walsh, thank you so much. And it sounds to me like we have a great call to action for summer jobs for the city, kids in the city. And um, the chief of staff, Dan Coe, I have his cell phone number. So as soon as you all decide that this is what you want to participate in, please see me and I'm going to give you a cell phone number. We can hook you up with kids and summer jobs instantly. Is that good, Dan? That works. Okay, thank you. So that was wonderful. What a way to start this off. And I feel like nothing unifies people in my mind like music. You can take a group of eclectic people, you can put them in the room with great music and before you know it, everyone's moving, everyone's talking, everyone's having fun. So for us, for the Rosoff Awards, that's always an important thing is what music are we gonna have? How are we gonna entertain people? And especially being in the creative community, it's important to us. So I did the obvious thing and I went on YouTube. And yes, I cruise YouTube with some frequency. <laughs> I'm willing to admit it. And I was looking at music acts and I was digging deep and I found this young talent. And when I listened to him, I was, I said, I, I can't believe this guy's voice. His name is Nigel, Nigel Tay. He's a singer, a songwriter, a multi-instrumentalist and a producer. And he's from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And as I looked at the YouTube page, and I got a little, I said, am I the only one who's going to think this kid's as outstanding as he is? And then I looked at the number of hits he had on YouTube. I was like, yeah, no. Clearly, he's going to be great. So I tweeted at him. <laughs> That's how I get a lot of things done, just saying. <laughs> like nothing, 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 nothing back. So then I tweeted at him again, and I was being very nice. I said, could you please, you know, follow me so I can do a direct tweet to you? And then a day went by, and I got all good from him. <laughs> so it's like, okay, all good. I guess that means we're good, and I can direct tweet him. So it turns out he was a senior at Berkeley School of Music right here in fabulous Boston. When I saw that, I was like, oh, praise God. Yeah, and he is here tonight with a group of musicians that you will, you will be so taken with, I hope, as taken with as I was. So they're going to, so um, Nigel's going to do three solo songs for you to sit and quietly listen to. And then his team and Nigel will perform for us during dinner and they'll be a little bit more quiet so we can eat and drink and, and enjoy each other's company. But so who we have here today is Mr. Nigel Tay. We have Tim Reynolds, who I believe is gonna be playing the violin with him. We have Ayman Radzi and Naga Santos. So please give a huge round of applause for our musicians. <laughs> Hi everybody. <laughs> so uh, I decided to just have everyone on stage because they're so awesome. We're all, yeah. We go to Berkey College of Music in Boston, and uh, yeah. <laughs> and we're here to play you some tunes. So I hope you enjoy yourself. Sit tight, relax, and just listen. <laughs> Thank you. 
get lost, you can always be found. Just know you're not alone. I'm gonna make this place your home. This next song is an original. It's called Song of Spring because we're in the season of spring. <laughs> Tall and proud, so sing to the song of your heart that the two apart. Oh, 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 we can sing out forever with every tune louder.
all would be wasted If nothing all would be wasted If not, then I would be wasted. Thank you. Thank you. We have one more song before we uh, get off stage and come back up later again. But uh, the song is, I, I feel like everybody knows the song. Anybody knows? OK, we'll just play it. Might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Sunshine, she's here, you can take a break. Hot air balloon that could go to space. With the air, but I don't care, baby, by the way. Sing it with me, come on. Hey, because I'm clap along if you Enjoy your meal, we'll be right back real soon. <laughs> 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 